The wild wild west is often romanticized in movies and literature as a lawless and adventurous era filled with cowboys, outlaws, and dusty towns. However, beyond the well-known tales of gunfights and gold rushes, there are countless unusual and lesser-known events that occurred during this captivating period of American history. In this video, we will explore 15 of the most unusual things that took place in the wild wild west, shedding light on the captivating and often overlooked aspects of this iconic era. So saddle up and prepare to be surprised by the unexpected tales that unfolded in the untamed frontier. Number 15. The Man with Two Graves Jesse James was a notorious outlaw who robbed banks and trains in the late 1800s. After he was killed, he was buried in his front yard to prevent grave robbers from stealing his body. However, his family later moved him to a proper cemetery in Kearney, Missouri. Interestingly, there is also a grave with Jesse James's name on it in Granbury, Texas. This grave belongs to a man named J. Frank Dalton, who claimed to be the real Jesse James when he appeared in 1948 at the age of 101. A court even allowed him to legally adopt the bandit's name. It is unclear why Dalton made this claim, or if he had any connection to Jesse James. However, DNA tests have confirmed that the real Jesse James is buried in Mount Olivet Cemetery in Kearney. So, how did Jesse James get two graves? Some people believe that Dalton was simply a con man trying to make a quick buck. Others believe that he may have been a distant relative of Jesse James, or even his illegitimate son. Still others believe that Jesse James faked his own death and lived under the alias J. Frank Dalton. Number 14. Gettysburg of the West In 1864, Confederate General Henry Hopkins Sibley led an invasion of Missouri in an attempt to relieve pressure on the Confederate armies in the East. However, he was met with strong resistance from Union forces under the command of General Samuel Curtis. The two armies clashed in a series of battles, culminating in the Battle of Westport on October 23, 1864. The battle was a decisive Union victory, and it effectively ended Sibley's invasion. The Battle of Westport was fought in the area of present-day Kansas City, Missouri. The Union forces were well positioned on a ridge south of Brush Creek. Sibley's army attempted to flank the Union position, but they were met with heavy resistance. The battle raged for several hours, and both sides suffered heavy casualties. In the end, the Union forces were victorious, and Sibley's army was forced to retreat. The Battle of Westport was a major turning point in the Civil War in the West. It showed that the Union was in control of Missouri, and it helped to demoralize the Confederate forces. The battle is often referred to as the Gettysburg of the West because of its importance. Number 13. The Bison Express The signing of the Pacific Railway Act of 1862 ushered in a new era of transportation in the United States. The construction of the Transcontinental Railroad would connect the East and West coasts, making it easier to transport goods and people. However, the railroad would also have a devastating impact on the American bison. Before the arrival of the railroad, an estimated 30 million to 60 million bison roamed the Great Plains. Native Americans hunted bison for food and shelter, but they did so responsibly, ensuring they didn't overhunt. However, the railroad made it easier for hunters from the east to reach the west, and they began killing buffalo for sport, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Unlike the Native Americans, the hunters from the east killed buffalo for fun. The railroads even advertised hunting by rail excursions, where passengers could shoot buffalo from the train. As a result, the bison population dwindled rapidly. Hunters killed hundreds of thousands of buffalo in just a few years, causing Native Americans to lose their primary food source and way of life. The decline of the bison signaled the end of the Indian Wars. By the end of the 19th century, only 300 buffalo were left in the wild. Congress finally took action, outlawing the killing of any birds or animals in Yellowstone National Park, where the only surviving buffalo herd could be protected. Conservationists established more wildlife preserves, and the species slowly rebounded. Today, there are more than 200,000 bison in North America. The story of the bison is a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked hunting and the importance of protecting our wildlife. It is also a reminder of the devastating impact that humans can have on the natural world. Number 12. Terrible Whiskey in the Wild West Imagine walking into a dusty saloon in the Wild West after a long day on the trail. 
You feel like a cowboy on top of the world. You saddle up on a bar stool and order the bartender's finest whiskey. You take a swig and immediately regret your decision. The stuff tastes like gasoline, even though the bottle boasts that it's been aged for a decade and hails all the way from Kentucky. Welcome to the world of Wild West whiskey. In those days, copyright laws were non-existent, and there was no one to enforce them on the frontier anyway. Whiskey producers often cut their whiskey with water or other spirits to increase profits, and some bourbons were distilled from low-grade molasses. The names of Wild West whiskeys were just as bizarre as the drinks themselves. There was Coffin Varnish, Mountain Howitzer, and Tangle Leg. The latter was so strong that it would often leave drinkers with tangled legs and unable to walk. Wild West whiskey was not for the faint of heart. It was often rough, harsh, and unpredictable. But it was also a symbol of the Wild West lifestyle, and it played an important role in the culture of the time. Number 11. Quick Draw Gunfight Wild Bill Hickok was a famous gunslinger in the Wild West. One day, he got into a dispute with a gambler named Davis Tut over gambling winnings. Tut demanded $40 from Hickok over some previous deal about a horse. Hickok gave Tut the $40, but Tut then demanded another $25. When Hickok refused, Tut snatched Hickok's pocket watch right off the table. The next day, Tut was strutting around town, showing off the watch. Hickok tried to reason with him, but Tut wouldn't listen. On July 21, 1865, in Springfield, Missouri, the two men faced off in what would become the first recorded quick-draw fight in history. Hickok warned Tut not to cross the square with the stolen watch, but Tut went for his gun anyway, and so did Hickok. The two paused momentarily, locked eyes, and then drew their weapons. Hickok was faster and emerged victorious, sending a bullet straight through Tut's heart. Word of the fight spread like wildfire. Two years later, an illustration of the showdown was featured in Harper's new monthly magazine. The quick draw gunfight between Hickok and Tut cemented Hickok's reputation as a skilled gunfighter and made him a legend of the Wild West. Number 10. The Gold Rush the California Gold Rush of 1849 is perhaps the most famous gold rush in American history, but it was not the first. The first gold rush in the United States occurred in Cabarrus County, North Carolina, in 1799. A young boy named Conrad Reed discovered a 17-pound gold nugget in his father's field. The nugget caused a sensation, and people from all over the country came to North Carolina in search of gold. The second gold rush in the United States occurred in Georgia in 1828. Gold was discovered in the Dahlonega area, and again, people from all over the country came to Georgia to try to strike it rich. The California gold rush of 1849 began when James Marshall discovered gold at Sutter's Mill. The news of the discovery spread quickly, and thousands of people from all over the world flocked to California in search of gold. The gold rush had a profound impact on California and the United States as a whole. It led to rapid population growth and economic development in California. It also helped to accelerate the westward expansion of the United States. Number 9. The OK Corral Shootout The gunfight at the OK Corral is one of the most famous gunfights in American history. It took place on October 26, 1881, in Tombstone, Arizona between a group of lawmen and cowboys. The gunfight lasted only 30 seconds, but it was a bloody encounter. Three of the lawmen, Virgil Earp, Wyatt Earp, and Doc Holliday, were injured, and three of the cowboys, Frank McClory, Tom McClory, and Billy Clanton, were killed. It is unclear who fired the first shot in the gunfight. The lawmen claimed that the cowboys drew their guns first, while the cowboys claimed that the lawmen shot them without warning. After the gunfight, the Earps and Holiday were put on trial for murder. However, they were all acquitted. The gunfight at the OK Corral has been the subject of much debate and controversy. Some people believe that the lawmen were justified in shooting the cowboys, while others believe that they were cold-blooded killers. Number 8. Dead Outlaws Posing for Photographs The Wild West was a lawless place, and outlaws were a common sight. When an outlaw met their demise, the townspeople often demanded proof. Photography, which had been invented in the mid-19th century, provided a way to capture the final image of a dead outlaw before they were buried. These photographs were often gruesome, but they served several purposes. First, they satisfied the townspeople's curiosity. 
Second, they sent a message to other would-be lawbreakers, this is what happens when you mess with the law. Finally, they provided a record of the Wild West, a time and place that was rapidly changing. Dead outlaw photographs were often taken at the scene of the crime, with the body propped up or surrounded by other outlaws or lawmen. Sometimes, the photographs were taken at a funeral parlor or morgue. In either case, the photographs were typically posed and arranged to create a dramatic effect. Number 7. Feral Camels Roaming the Plains of Texas In 1855, Jefferson Davis, then the Secretary of War, convinced Congress to spend $30,000 importing camels and dromedaries for military purposes. He believed that the animals would be useful for transporting supplies to remote outposts in the West, since the Transcontinental Railroad was still years away. The U.S. Army purchased 75 camels from the Mediterranean and Middle East. The camels were initially stationed at Camp Verde in Texas, where they were used to haul supplies to San Antonio. Some were also used for small pack trains to El Paso and Fort Bowie. In 1860, two expeditions were sent to search for undiscovered routes along the Mexican border. However, Congress rejected proposals to purchase more camels due to opposition from the mule lobby. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Texas seceded from the Union and Confederate forces took over Camp Verde and its camels. The camels were let loose to graze, and some wandered away. Union forces managed to capture three of them, which they then sold at an auction in Iowa in 1863. Others were used by the Confederate Post Office Department, while some found their way into Mexico. Number 6. Crashing Trains in the 1890s in the 1890s, Texans had limited entertainment options. In 1896, a railway agent named William Crush had a wild idea, crash two trains together for public entertainment. Crush convinced the Katy Railroad to go along with his plan. He prepared for the event with a team of workers, and on September 15, thousands of people traveled to Crush's temporary town called the City of Crush to see the crash. By 10 a.m., there were already 10,000 people at the event, and the crowds kept rolling in. Lawyers, doctors, farmers, artisans, clerks, and people from all walks of life were there to see something extraordinary. The event was so popular that the actual collision had to be delayed because trains were still arriving at the scheduled 4 p.m. showtime. In total, 40,000 people showed up, making Crush the second largest city in Texas for a few hours. At 5.10 p.m., Crush rode in on a white horse and signaled for the trains to start. The engineers and conductors on board each engine got things moving and then jumped to safety about 30 yards from the starting point. As the two engines approached each other, they reached speeds of 50 miles per hour, dragging a row of empty boxcars behind them. The collision was as epic as everyone hoped, but it quickly turned dangerous. The boilers on both engines exploded, sending flying missiles of iron and steel into the air. At least two people died, and many others were injured. Despite the disaster, the event was a huge success with international press coverage, and Katie became an overnight sensation. The event also sparked a debate about the ethics of staging dangerous stunts for entertainment. Number 5. Armed Bank Robbery Contrary to popular belief, the Wild West was not the birthplace of bank robberies. The first non-war-related bank robbery in America occurred in Malden, Massachusetts, on December 15, 1863. The robber was Edward Green, a 32-year-old postmaster with a sizable debt. Green entered the Malden Bank at noon, intending to steal some cash to pay off his debts. However, only one person was working at the time, a 17-year-old boy who happened to be the bank president's son. Green left empty-handed, but he returned home and retrieved a firearm. He then returned to the bank and shot the boy point-blank in the head. Green fled the scene with $5,000 in cash. This was a significant sum of money in 1863, equivalent to over $100,000 today. Green's sudden windfall did not go unnoticed, and he was arrested a month later. Green confessed to the robbery and was convicted of murder. He was hanged in March 1864, becoming the first person in America to be executed for an armed bank robbery. Green's crime ushered in a new era of bank robbery in America. In the years that followed, other criminals would imitate his methods, and bank robberies became increasingly common. Number 4. Train Robbery 
The Reno Gang was a group of criminals who operated in the Midwestern United States during and just after the American Civil War. They are best known for being the first gang to rob a moving train. On October 6, 1866, the Reno Gang boarded an Ohio and Mississippi railway train as it started to leave the Seymour Depot. They broke into the express car, restrained the guard, and broke open a safe containing approximately $18,000 in cash and jewelry. The gang then kicked the safe off the train, hoping to come back for it later. Unfortunately, the safe was too heavy, and they had to leave it behind. A couple of years later, the law caught up with the Reno gang, and six members were hanged on a tree at a spot now known as Hangman Crossing. They were buried in Seymour, Indiana. Number 3. Failed Robbery Elmer McCurdy was a train robber who failed miserably at his one and only heist. In 1911, he attempted to rob a passenger train that he thought was carrying gold. However, he only managed to get away with $46. To make matters worse, McCurdy was shot and killed by law enforcement shortly after the robbery. His body was then embalmed with an arsenic preparation and sold to a traveling carnival as a sideshow curiosity. For the next 60 years, McCurdy's body was bought and sold like a used car. It was passed around from haunted houses to wax museums as a creepy prop or attraction. In 1976, while filming The Six Million Dollar Man at an amusement park in Long Beach, California, one of the prop's fingers broke off, revealing a piece of human tissue. The prop was actually Elmer McCurdy's body all along. After some testing by the Los Angeles coroner's office, McCurdy's body was finally buried at Boot Hill Cemetery in Dodge City, Kansas, where he now rests in peace. Number 2. Cowboys Didn't Wear 10-Gallon Hats Contrary to popular belief, cowboys in the Wild West didn't wear 10-gallon hats. Instead, they wore flat-brimmed Stetsons called the Boss of the Plain. These hats were lightweight, waterproof, and durable, with a wide brim that kept the sun out of the eyes and protected the neck. The Boss of the Plains was the hat of choice for cowboys, ranchers, farmers, and anyone who spent time outdoors. It was also relatively expensive, retailing for $4.50 in the day, which is about $74 in today's money. The creator of the Stetson, John Stetson, noticed that the hats people wore on the planes weren't cutting it. Straw, silk, fur, and wool hats were either too hot in the summer or soggy in the rain. So, he devised the perfect solution, the boss of the planes. The boss of the planes was made with Nutria fur, which is a durable and water-resistant material. The hat also had a felt liner that helped to insulate it and keep the wearer's head warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Number 1. Famous Gunmen Performed for Shows Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show was a popular stage production that featured famous gunmen like Buffalo Bill and Wild Bill Hickok. The show was known for its wild and crazy performances, including buffalo hunts, reenactments of famous events, and campfire tales. One of the most popular aspects of the show was the campfire tales that Buffalo Bill and Wild Bill would tell. The two legendary figures would regale the crowd with stories of their adventures and daring deeds, transporting them to the Wild West. Buffalo Bill's Wild West show was a huge success, and it toured all over the world. In 1902, Buffalo Bill held a parade in New York City that featured cowboys, Native Americans, and other animals. The parade was a sight to behold, and it is still remembered today. The Wild West show helped to popularize the image of the Wild West and its cowboys and gunslingers. It also helped to create a romantic myth about the American frontier. While the show was not entirely accurate, it did provide a glimpse into the Wild West for people who had never been there. It also helped to preserve the memory of the Wild West for future generations. So there you have it, our top 15 unusual events in the Wild Wild West. Which of these would you have loved to witness? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next video.